Welcome back, everybody, to Quid Pro Quo, the music podcast where I introduce my friends and loved ones to progressive rock music, and they in turn get me to listen to, well, whatever they want. And this season, or this episode, we have a really special returning guest of Megan. Megan has had me listen to a handful of albums already, and this one, she came a swinging. I'm really excited to talk to you about this really interesting project that she's introduced to me, and I get her to listen to one of my all-time favorites, uh, my probably my favorite uh, progressive metal band, if I'm being perfectly honest. So I'm really excited for you guys to dive into this one and uh, find out what we've got in store. As always, a huge shout out to Olena Alinsky for uh, designing the show's graphic, as well as Explosive Ear Candy for the uh, their track all together now, which is the soundtrack to this podcast. So without further ado, let's dive in. Great, let's do it. All right. Uh, welcome back, Megan. Hi. Woohoo. I'm here. Yay. <laughs> one of my all-time favorite people i love talking about music and uh this is my ultimate quest to try to get you into progressive rock um oh i don't know if it's gonna work michael but like <laughs> you keep trying i keep trying you know it's the little engine that could um so for those that don't know do you want to give a quick introduction and how we know one another yeah we're friends five mm -hmm. years officially this it May. is or well, we'll be in September technically, but like mm -hmm. five years. Um, we used to work together at a little nonprofit and we were desk buddies and mm -hmm. we bonded over uh, everything, we bond over? essentially. Everything, yeah. I guess. Not ABBA though. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll get you to listen to ABBA. So I guess I'm not going to be listening to ABBA today then. No, not today, because I was hoping you would do like a special where you would bring people who've been forcing you to do ABBA. But... I mean, maybe I'll do like a birthday special where I get like you and Lauren and Stephanie and Bethany on as like a tag team to try to get me to listen to ABBA. And I'll get you to listen to like some, I don't know, Swedish, Norwegian death metal or something like that. Yeah, which is also why I'm upset that you did not like my last pick because you freaking listen to death metal. Like I, I, I know. I know. After it's... our podcast episode, <laughs> I walked out of the room. I looked to my roommate, and he was like, "How did it go?" I was like, "He hated it." And we were all. I was dis. He was disappointed. I was disappointed. I it lasted a week or two. Like yeah. I can't. Still can't believe you didn't like it. I'm so I'm sorry. I'm not gonna lie. I did not listen to Genesis again. <gasps> half because like I didn't really want to and all the, the other half is because I, in spite that in you spite. did not like oh no regrets. that hurts that <laughs> yeah. hurts I have regrets now oh <laughs> oh boy well I mean I can't I can't be anything but me so I I just I couldn't do it um I, I know I, it's okay yeah again I appreciate where they're coming from it just didn't land with me that's all that's all it was that's fine yeah I was like telling my roommate he was I was like he didn't like how uh, pop punk because like the music is like I don't know like you you enjoy like the instruments I don't know mm -hmm. how technical terms yeah 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 I don't and he was like what pop punk is amazing and he went <laughs> off and I was like okay I'm a newbie in pop punk so don't like <laughs> right yeah. yeah it's just yeah it's a genre that I I have a difficult time with um, but I, that doesn't necessarily mean that I won't try with different artists. You know, I always, I never write any genre off completely. It's just like, well, that wasn't the one that did it for me. That's all. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but, um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one. I'm pretty excited about this one. I'm not going to lie. Um, do you want me to talk about the, the album and artists that I have chosen for you, or would you like to do that one for me? Either or, it's your podcast, which you, okay. you seem, you, you go first. You seem very excited. I am very excited. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I have um, the last two records that I had you listen to were from artists that I kind of knew you would at the very least enjoy. Like I went in knowing that, um, and this is the first one I'm like, I'm not quite sure, but I have faith. I have faith. Um, this is from one of the largest um, symphonic metal bands out there. Um, and I don't know if I would even qualify them as a symphonic metal. They, they're much more of like a straight up progressive metal band. Uh, they started in the early 2010s. And 
skyrocketed right onto the progressive rock airways. And in my mind, they revolutionized what progressive metal was doing. And there were so like all the bands that came out after that were sticking to the mold that they had laid down. So this is one of my all time favorite bands. I've seen them like four times um, and I'm pretty excited for you to listen to it. Um, now, if you don't connect with it, that's perfectly fine. I'm not pressuring you or anything. I'm just, uh, this is one of my favorites. Oh man, I'm like on the edge of my seat. Cause like, I don't technically, t- typically like me- heavy metal stuff. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and that's but why I but... always wanted to go to one, like an underground concert, like my old roommate slash friend he like goes to all these like concerts for heavy metal bands and I was like I want to experience it once I just want to be there to experience a mosh pit I'm not going to participate in the mosh pit but like look at right. all the people like why do you go to these shows yeah but COVID hit <laughs> COVID hit yeah uh mm-hmm. well the next time like once everything opens back up I will take you because it really is one of the greatest things I don't mosh but what I'll do is I'll stand on the periphery of the mosh and just help people that fall out it's, yeah, that's, what, that's me too. I'll mm-hmm. only stand behind you and watch you do that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great time. So the the band that I'm getting you to listen to is called Haken. Uh, it's okay. H-A-K-E-N. They are from the UK. Um, and I was kind of debating which album to give you, but I figured I'd give you their debut album, their first album. Um it is a concept album, as a lot of the albums that I have my friends listen to. Um, and it's probably my favorite from them. Like it always kind of wavers back and forth, which one I like more, this one or their third album. But I think at the end of the day, I like this one a little bit more um, because of the variety of music that's found on here. Um, there's a number of tracks that are kind of uplifting and happy. They're not just like beating you over the head with metal the whole time. Um, and yeah, there's some very somber stuff as well. The whole concept without giving too much away is about a fisherman who, uh, hooks a mermaid and what he does with it. So. Cool. That's, that's what I've got for you. And I'm pretty excited to hear your take on it. Great. Are you nervous? I'm very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> this will be good. This will be good. This will be good. Okay. You want to know what you'll be listening to? I can't but... wait. Okay. I think you may like this because um, thinking back when we were work desk buddies, I always noticed you like when you were doing the webinars, you would have the lo-fi YouTube music on with the girl at the desk like everyone yeah. knows, knows yeah, that. yeah and this um I would say it's like SoundCloud artist lo-fi like okay metal like not metal um mellow pop sort of is it like dream pop or synth wave they're like it's like an R&B pop group okay 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 with yeah um, they they're recently new. They formed in 2017. Um, nice. <laughs> the story goes: mm-hmm. Drake's audio engineer and Adele's vocal coach met at a bar mitzvah, and mm-hmm. they knew each other through like mutual friends. Right. So they were like chatting it up and formed this group. Mm-hmm. Um, they go anonymous anonymously, so it's. Uh, but if you Google search, you can figure out who they are. Who they are, yeah. Um, and you're going to be listening to their debut album as well. Um, it's shorter, so you could also listen to their second one. They only have two. Um, but, so the band is called Emotional Oranges, and the record is The Juice Volume 1. I yeah. love their name. That's sort of why I, set, I wanted that you to is... listen to them. And I'm also just like, they've been in a session and every time I've been on this podcast, I make you listen to whatever I'm obsessed with. So um, I, I yeah. love, I love the, the name. Cause this like, he uh, harkens back to like the late sixties, early seventies psychedelic names like uh, atomic rooster and strawberry alarm clock and um, like the psychedelic fudge. So I'm loving that the, the emotional oranges. 
I yeah, I and um, not to give too much away, they'll you'll find some influences from the '70s and maybe in the '90s in their music. But um, yeah, uh, if you want, I my interpretation of this album is that it's not like a fisherman hooks a mermaid. It's more so like a guy and a girl meet and like their relationship. Mm-hmm. So. I hope you interpret that as well, that I'm not just wrong. <laughs> oh, no. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, it is It is a short album. It's not even a half hour long. I know. So if you want to listen to the volume two as well, um, I'm not prepared to talk about volume two. I can tell you which songs I like on volume two, but I have, okay. I can, I can de- probably have more information on volume one i will i will dive deep into volume one and i'll listen to it a couple of times because i believe aquarius the album that i have for you is 72 minutes oh geez so you can i can listen to this like three or four times yeah in your in your run um i apologize um but i know you can i know you can handle it so I know. I also want dinner. So I'm like, but I also want to, take notes, so I got to figure out how to like, how, how to balance gonna... this. It's yeah. going to be, it's going to be fine. We'll have lots of time to discuss. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to listening to the emotional oranges and I know you're going to have some good times with, uh, with Haken and Aquarius. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm excited. <laughs> All right. And with that, Megan and I go into our own separate silos to listen to one another's music. I get to listen to the uh, the emotional oranges and she gets to listen to Haken. I can't wait for you guys to hear what we've got in store for both of those. Really excited to talk about the, uh, the emotional oranges and I'm really excited to hear what Megan has to say about Haken. As always, I want to do a little bit of a shout out to those who are supporting me on Patreon. Uh, the first one I want to shout out is a long-term um, supporter of Rick Phillips and Rick has been with me from the very beginning. So thank you very much, Rick, as well as a newer individual of Robert Goldstein. So thank you, Rick and Robert, some double R's today. If you want to be cool, like both of these individuals head on over to my Patreon account, it's Patreon slash notes reviews. That's Patreon slash notes reviews. And uh, even a dollar a month really does go a long way. Uh, I'll shout you out on this podcast proper, as well as you'll end up in my uh, end credits on my um, my YouTube videos. Uh, and you can actually watch this on YouTube if you aren't already. Uh, that's at uh, quid pro quo. Uh, and um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can also check me out wherever you can find your podcast. Same name. Uh, if you want to find out more of what I'm doing, hit me up over at Notes Reviews as well as Notes on Tabletop Role Playing Games, where I'm talking about my different role playing games that I love to play. Anyway, that's enough about me and promoting my own material. Let's head back into the podcast proper, find out what Megan thought of Haken and what I thought about the emotional oranges. Let's dive back in. Okay. I got I got to know how was that? Uh I don't I was I knew you were going to ask me this and I was like what am I going to tell him? I what really, are you going to tell me? I really don't know. I guess it was oh. fine. Like I okay, okay. I'm not going to listen to it again, but <laughs> Oh no. Cuz like can you please explain what prog music is? Is it just like the weirdness of it? Like I, I really, (laughs) I see the connection of all the three albums I listen to, but I'm still very like, what is it now? Yeah. It's really hard to kind of like nail down when you're coming to like genres. In my mind, there are like two expressions when it comes to progressive rock um like two kind of ways to differentiate uh the one is within the music itself and the other is within the context of other genres of music so within the first part usually it's tracks that are long in length like you know going in towards six to even 20 sometimes 30 minutes um there's an emphasis on musicianship um different time signatures um lengthy keyboard and guitar solos um very flowery 
uh, lyrics, you know, very, um, sometimes they tell stories. Um, they don't rely on just like love or social interactions. Sometimes it's about wizards or space operas or a fisherman catching a mermaid. Um, <laughs> and for me, that's kind of the, um, the distilled quality of progressive rock and it can take on many different styles like that's why there's like progressive folk music or progressive rock music or progressive metal music um okay because my yeah. other thought was it was not as heavy metal as i thought it was i yeah. was preparing for like 20 minutes of like <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> you you and Sarah both were like I was afraid for growls and I wouldn't do that to you guys on your first venture out uh now there are a few growls in this album but there's only like maybe one moment with it in it like in the first song yeah within the first song so yeah um yeah so I guess that's why you can have like technical death progressive rock or technical death metal Mm -hmm. because those tracks generally go into like the 10 minute mark and there's a lot of screaming and growling um so yeah yeah i would say that's my initial thought is that it wasn't as heavy metal as i thought it was gonna be okay um, i i enjoyed the singing vocals that's good um and i also enjoyed how like very literal the story of the fisherman and the mermaid was yes unlike the last two albums where like the stories were like you had to interpret on your own yeah with google's help <laughs> <laughs> this this they leave a very obvious breadcrumb trail of what's going on in the story yeah um other than that i there i noticed there was like a lot of like different types of genres like jazz and like mm -hmm. metal and prog in there and like polka at some point yes that's one of the things i loved about this album so then i read someone's critique because like i had google up while i was listening to this yeah, might as well yeah yeah and like someone was saying like and i don't know if i agree with this or not but like do you think they were just like throwing everything at the wall and then seeing what would stick because they wrote it Bass, I read that they wrote it first on piano and yeah. this guy I think complaint was like some of the strong song structures structures were like on the weaker side hmm. I can see where he's coming from like, and I can see where it is very much throwing th thing on the wall and seeing what sticks mm -hmm. for me I love the variety and how each new expression still leads towards the the, the theme of the song going on so mm -hmm. like those moments where you're having polka or ragtime type of a, a song that's a little bit of like the celebration the oddness of it like this guy pulls a mermaid out of the the water like what's it's both joyous I'm off at this guy also <laughs> oh yeah he is not a good guy that's one of the I, things like he is not a good guy oh i i took notes for a song for a song i don't know if we're gonna do that in this let's episode. do it yeah let's do it um okay so do, 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 do. what was it oh the second song yeah why didn't i write the title on i believe okay. that streams yes it is streams and at first, I thought the verses in the first part, because it's divided into threes, sounded very 90s pop female, like Thousand mm -hmm. Miles. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's very uplifting. I love how... But then, I like, the second part is, like, so angry. Yes. Because, like, I think that's the turn of the event when she realizes she's in the aquarium. Yeah, yeah. Which I, like, I like, I, I, I enjoy those moments in songs when, like, yeah, it switches, right? It, yeah. it fluctuates. You and go from behind it. And that's stuff. right. Yeah, it's not just we're going from one mo emotion to another for no apparent reason. It is that realization of oh, okay, this is what's going on. Yeah. Um, and then like with that song, <laughs> I um I wrote the quote: "All our journey will end at the same destination," and I just mm. thought that was very powerful line. That's yeah, I love the poeticness of this. The third song is one of my favorites. So I'm really excited to hear your thoughts about this one. Okay, so I interpreted, which I think was pretty obvious that it was, he caught the mermaid and that was using her for fame and fortune. Yeah. Like sold her to the circus and stuff. And it 
infuriated me so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, I think the music just sort of made it seem very gross. Like, yeah. I don't know why. I just, I was just like, oh. And like, I could also visualize this as like a dark, like Tim Burton live action movie with like a mm-hmm. montage of like mm-hmm. the catch and the big wet out of waves of the sea yep. or whatever yep. like that. And like, just with this song on top of it, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It, yeah, I, yeah. I just, it just pissed me off. I was just like, oh, come on. No, it's it's fair. Like, it is a very emotive song in that sense. And this is one of those, like, I love the musical interlude because it is kind of like at the circus. So, you know, circuses are supposed to be this fun and happy place, you know, the greatest show on earth. And yet when you actually get down to it, it's kind of a horrific thing especially mm-hmm. like in terms of like the care of animals and i mean even when like the circuses were first getting out the horrific treatment of people so yeah it's it's this really strange dichotomy within that yeah and then i think uh the fourth song with internal rain i just wrote like he realizes the mistake of the capture mm-hmm, Dr- mm-hmm. uh johnny and the flood was the surprisingly the fifth song that I and the first for, but the first song for me that I felt like was getting closer to what I thought was heavy metal like interesting it, yeah it had a lot of the what I think of as heavy metal um yeah because I love the build up or whatever I, yeah I love the build up at the end where it's that massive climb to that uh drowning in the flood uh motif Um, And again, I remember watching them play this live and just getting like emotional during this track. Well, this is the thing with the sixth track, Sun, like it was very peaceful, but I did not feel for the guy after the loss. (laughs) Like he used the mermaid. Uh Like, I don't know if we're supposed to feel for him because of the soundtrack being so, the sound being so peaceful, but um, no, 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 no. It's, it's left to interpretation. Like they don't, this is one of the things that I love about this particular concept. They don't force feed you what you're supposed to feel. They're mm-hmm. just kind of presenting you with this is what happened. Uh, so I think it's more of like the music that he would be listening to. It's like kind of representing where he's at and whether or not you buy it. Oh God. <laughs> Do you think this guy fell in love with the mermaid? I don't, uh, I think he did. I think he did. Um, Do you think he, she loved him? That I don't think so. No, I think that's the typical. Um, I think she may have at the very beginning, but after everything that he did, there was no way. He was. It's kind of that mm-hmm. betrayal within the human nature that she sees human nature for what it actually is, or at least represented through this individual. Um, and it's kind of that... Um, I think for both sides, um, he fell in love with the idea of what it, like what it could mean for him. Mm-hmm. Whereas she fell in love with the companionship and seeing somebody that's different than what she's used to. And then how the remorse from him after seeing what he's done and essentially reaping what he's sowed and the remorse. Uh, and for her, it's that betrayal. Mm-hmm. And so for him, it's almost like a double, uh, a double betrayal uh, because now he can never get her back. Like even if he were to get her back, it, she would not take him back for sure. No, who would? Jeez. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Some guys, right? Mm-hmm. And then yeah. for the last song, I just wrote Polka. <laughs> <laughs> But also, I've got like the songs are so long. I think we, yeah. I think I repeat this every single time I talk to you, Michael, in this yeah. podcast. I do not like long songs. I, I know long of songs. I know, I know. Like there's some songs that like like I think the six seven mark will be probably the longest I would go. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. by the time I got to the seventh song, I'm not gonna lie. I started watching a YouTube video. Oh, and it's and it's it, a sh- go for it, go for it. I was gonna say, and I read it's people's favorite song, and I was like yeah yeah it's my favorite song off of this album and i would again i'm not going to tell you what to do but i would recommend re-listening to it uh, just because um it has um snippets from almost every track in it at one point or another 
um, which is where there's the callback to the polka, where there's the callback to the ragtime. Uh, but what I particularly love is the big crescendo near the end point where there's this like revolution where she's uh, found her way back home and leaves the humanity behind her um, and basically says, screw you to the guy, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, I, I don't know. I, this is one of the few songs where if, if I'm See, in- I did not, I, Oh, sorry to cut you off. Go for like, it, go for I it. I didn't interpret any, I like read the lyrics and I was like, I don't know what the song's supposed to mean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of left to interpretation. That's how I've interpreted the last track. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, I don't know, I have to be very careful because if I get into the track and I start listening to that, final play out I can get very emotional and I have you know been clocked at crying during this track um oh. yeah I know it's it's pretty pretty embarrassing but yeah I just no, to, each, to each their own yeah I just I don't know I love that that final track of Celestial Elixir it's one of my favorites hmm. yeah yeah do you have any comments about this album um I think I mainly touched upon most of the things the one thing that I will add that we didn't is that like, as I mentioned, when I was introducing this album, this album helped influence and spark a lot of other bands to come out. Um, yeah, cause like yeah. when you would talk about that, I was like, oh, they're from like the seventies or whatnot. No, they, they formed in like 2010. Yeah, yeah, this album came out in 2010. Um, and they've like, not only did they help newer bands come from nothing they also helped shine the light on bands that were already out at that time due mm. to the popularity of this one and that's one of the reasons why i think they're my favorite metal like my favorite progressive metal band um and i find with each album they try to reinvent themselves and they don't just play completely back to the masterpiece that this is so yeah i that's what I have to say about it. Yeah, like I, I just to add that they, the point of like they, they're a newer band, a prog mm -hmm. rock band or whatever. Um, I, leading up to this podcast, like this episode, I was, mm -hmm. I've been thinking about like, is progressive rock just in the seventies? Is that like a distinguishing factor of it? Because then I wanted to like, I think why I chose emotional oranges is because like they are a SoundCloud band. I think they started on SoundCloud and I was like, oh, I'm curious what a progressive rock SoundCloud band would be mm. like, is that a thing? Like, and I guess like I, maybe not exactly a thing, but them being a newer band just proves that, okay, progressive rock is not like defined by an era of time. Yeah, like, and this is kind of where you get the, um, the different genre, or I guess the different definitions of what progressive rock is because like definitely progressive rock got its start in like 1969 and kind of died from the public eye in like 1978 1979 mm -hmm. um and that's kind of when like progressive rock had its heyday because it fit both of the ideologies of what i feel progressive rock is so we had the first one that i already talked about but the second one is pushing the music as a whole forward so not doing what anybody else is doing, taking influences outside of whatever is popular at the time and um, allowing the song to like not being constrained by any preconceived notions of what music should be or what it should sound like. So in the seventies, both of these were the same thing because all those bands were putting out these sounds that had never been found before. And so when there was this other, um, like in the 90s and the 2000s, when progressive rock was starting to come back a little bit, a lot of people felt that it wasn't real progressive rock because it just sounded like the stuff from the 70s. And that's not progressive, right? If anything, that's mm -hmm. regressive, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I say like from the 90s, there was kind of this split between the two ideologies of what progressive rock should be. In the one camp, you have these bands that are going back to the 70s and just recreating the soundscapes from that era. But on the other hand, you have other bands that are pushing the music forward. They're not like they're taking the idea, the spirit of that and applying it to the music now. So that's kind of where we've got. And I feel like Haken does both, but mainly they're hanging on towards that 
the spirit of the 70s, but applying it to the metal music of today, which other bands before Haken has already done. Like metal was doing that from their inception in the 80s. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what my thoughts. <laughs> well, I I'm actually took notes. So <laughs> I'm glad you didn't overtly hate it. Um, no, like I went. It's I'll, I'm open to anything. Like, yeah. as, like I think the more the my initial thought is like this isn't heavy metal, but like it has some aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you didn't completely turn off and you gave it a chance. Um, and oh yeah, geez, yeah. I'm, I'm nervous about what your thoughts on emotional oranges are. So uh, my thoughts about emotional oranges is um, I actually enjoyed them. I really had a good time with them. Yeah. So, Yay. Yeah. Okay. Don't, it was like such a ride. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, um, I think I liked their lo-fi somber tracks, like their more mellow tracks mm -hmm. the most. Like my favorite track off of theirs and I also took notes um is Hold You Back was my mm. favorite track off of there there was some really really nice low-end sounds that were coming out from that one mm -hmm. um and the one thing that I really did enjoy from all these tracks was how prominent the bass licks were uh in setting down the tone and the the meter of the album mm -hmm. um and I could feel like Drake and Rihanna's love child in this like I can feel both of their essences on this um because it does feel very similar to some of Drake's flow with Rihanna's personality on it so I I particularly loved Hold You Back and I also loved the uh track uh Good To Me the two smaller tracks off of the album mm -hmm. um some of the more loud like I was trying to think of the like the the word for it um but like some of the bigger tracks like personal built that way and um unless you're drowning I didn't like as much they were still good mm -hmm. um but I didn't really connect with them as much as some of those smaller tracks I just Maybe I'm not a big fan of calling people out or like the diss track or things like that. Not gonna lie, unless you're drowning, it's like like man, that was that like was a stab in the heart. <laughs> oh, like it's raw. It's yeah. real. Like I want to find out who done them dirty to have this song written about them. Me I'm like, too. geez, like don't call me unless you're drowning. Like holy geez. And then I was like, I, when I listen to it, sometimes I'm thinking like. Yeah, you know, I've had those moments where like I'm like mad at someone and I don't want to hear it from them unless something like bad drastic is, is going on. Yeah. yeah. But wow. So <laughs> maybe I just wasn't in the right frame of mind for that. Um no, I, I I see your point to that one. Yeah, but like I still I still ooh, sorry about that. I still really enjoyed a lot of the ebb and flow of this album. Like this had mm -hmm. a really, and I might be dating myself with this style of language, but it had a really fresh flow to it. Yes, it's been a while since I listened to an album that had a really good flow, that had like a story that sort of just like went through the album. Mm -hmm. Like I know you listen to a lot of, like <laughs> you you listen to a lot of albums that are like that, but like pop nowadays and R&B, I find aren't, isn't like that yeah or like it's hard to find so that's yeah what I about it yeah and I don't like I don't really frequent pop and R&B all that much outside of you know Taylor Swift or Ava yeah. Max or all those and like I don't I think like the last really big diss track that Taylor put out was on uh Reputation and she's kind of distanced herself off of that so yeah we don't talk about that album see I, I love that album I don't like I don't I don't really like Taylor Swift, like she's okay to me. I'm not a huge like super fan. Like I'll listen to her, right. but like I just know that album. I went left, some, right? <laughs> See, and I like it's not my favorite album by any stretch, but I think it's her most consistent album. Um, anyway, we're getting a little bit off topic. This is not this. a Taylor Swift. <laughs> this isn't a episode. Taylor Swift episode. No. Um, 
so yeah, I really, really enjoyed the the fresh flow of this album. And I think a lot of that had to do with the bass work and more of the low end. So I can feel that hi-fi low end hip hops to study to. Mm -hmm. uh, that was probably the best way to introduce this album to me with, because I, I was like, immediately I knew exactly what I was getting in for. Yeah, I, I and I also did a re-listen. Oh, I've been listening to it nonstop, but like right. the I just been listening to like a random playlist that they're on. So like their mm -hmm. songs are all over the place. But a couple of days ago, I listened. I re-listened to the album in full, and I, I think it was like the second track had like violins in the mm -hmm. song and stuff. And I was like, oh, I never noticed this before. But like they're so subtle, but they add to this. Like I thought they add to the song nicely. I don't know. I just thought it was. You can tell these two people, whoever they are, you can Google search and figure out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to keep with their anonymous, A and V is what they go by. Um, right. You can tell they, they're expert in their field. Like, yeah, yeah. Like they, they took like the, the engineer aspect of their job, mm -hmm. their skill sets and the vocal coach and like merged yeah. into this yeah, masterpiece. It worked really really well and yeah i i agree that not only are they brilliant in structuring songs and structuring like a rhythm section but they're also really brilliant in layering a song mm -hmm. um, because as you were mentioning like there's a depth within these tracks that you can listen to them three four five times and still find things new about them even though for me I find those on much more complex tracks, like what we were listening to with Haken. Like each time I'll notice there's different things in the background. And I, I particularly like it when it's on a very simple track. Mm -hmm. because And simple not in like a, oh, this is simple. I don't like it. But simple in it's um, distilling a very complex idea. You know, it, it's something that I always say is it's easier to write a like a simple track than it is a more complex track, but it's infinitely harder to write a good simple track than it is to write a good complex track. Mm -hmm. So, and I feel like that can be applied to this album for sure. So, Also yeah. like, there was like, I didn't, I read an article also just to prepare myself for this podcast mm -hmm. episode. And like uh, some, they were talking about how like the influence of 70s and some, some 90s and mm -hmm. I thought something else I was like oh I yeah, I'm, trying it to, I'm trying to remember I think it was built this way that reminded Emotions, me sorry. yeah yeah uh built this way for me was the one that kind of reminded me of like a 90s sound in the almost like a boy band instrumental piece just yes. with the rhythm section it reminded me of a boy band that i used to love called five uh it had that kind of flair to it i'm gonna google search who five is you you have oh man i'm dating myself because again i grew up in the 90s right so like no i might know i just they were the ones that did uh slam dunk the funk and um when the lights go out Okay. Those were their two big tracks. It was one oh, of Oh, I know when the lights go out. Yeah, baby, when the lights go out. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. I know yeah. that song. <laughs> I bought the tape just from that track alone. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. We're learning so much about you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play that tape so often. It was, it was good. It was a good time. Um, so, yeah, on that note... <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Megan, for coming back on the podcast and uh, broadening my horizon with some emotional oranges. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad I could redeem myself from the last episode I was on. Oh, you don't need to redeem yourself. You're always going to be in my high books. Come on. I know I have great music taste. You do. <laughs> yeah, just because I don't connect with an album doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It just means I didn't connect with it. That's all. So. I'm also interested in the next time I'm on what I'm obsessing about because we went from like Spanish music to mm -hmm. punk rock to mm -hmm. lo-fi R&B. Yeah. What is next? What is next? This is one of the reasons why I have you on because it's, it's always a surprise and it's always a delight. So mm -hmm. this was a great time. Uh, is there anything you want to leave the listeners with? Anything you want them to be aware of? No, I mean, we're in lockdown. What what else is new? I don't know. Uh, I know for me, like, I'm already planning a separate podcast after this one, so. 
Um, no, maybe... I'm just gonna. <laughs> this is gonna. This is embarrassing. I'm gonna freak out of picking on an AC unit for my Ooh, new apartment. That's right. Yes. <laughs> so, Good uh, luck and stay cool. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Well, thank you for coming on and thank you for listening and watching. Um, if you want to see more of me, check out, um, well, if you're listening to this on podcast, check it out on uh, YouTube because it's also there and vice versa. If you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube and you get to see our awesome faces, uh, check us out wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, yeah, I guess until next time, just keep sharing music, everybody. <laughs>